Well, hello, everybody. And I know that there will more, be more people uh, coming in um, to uh, once we get started here and a number of people are signing in for the recording. Um, but I want to thank my dear colleague, Nawang, who uh, is going to be leading off in this presentation. Nawang. It has been a great joy to have you your colleague uh, now for almost 30 years. And uh, what you are reflecting on here in this uh, fourth Tuesday presentation is a collegial relationship with the wonderful country of Nepal that goes back 70 years. And so just speaking on an extremely personal basis, I want to thank you, Nawang, for being the colleague for so long and for all the heroic and wonderful things you've done during that period of time. But I also want to say personally how excited I am to hear the first of the two Nepal presentations where we will be reflecting on this 70 year history um, of future generations working in Nepal. And for those of you who are less familiar with Nepal than Nawang and Surindra and some of the rest of us. 70 years ago, or actually 73 years ago, Nepal joined the modern world. It was considered in 1950 to be the most isolated country on earth. The hardest country for non-Nepalese to enter. And during that period of time, Nepal as a country has moved into a central meeting spot and crossroads for the world. And it has been the great pleasure um, to have the, involve, this involvement to see it. For me personally and Nawang and Surendra, I want to welcome you and thank you for introducing that history um, as Nepalese, as to your colleagues, here at Future Generations University. This is really a very exciting personal moment for me. And um, I know Bob Fleming was going to be particularly interested as well in seeing your reflection on those 70 years because as you're about to present, the Fleming legacy has been central to that whole process. And of course, we have another Fleming legacy here that's also part of the Nepal history sitting across the room from me, but 
a little bit different than Bob Fleming. So, but welcome, Nawang and Surendra, and I turn it over to you, Nawang, with great appreciation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Dana. Uh, namaste, everyone, and uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, respective country uh, you know, participants. And as uh, Daniel uh, introduced, uh, we are sharing kind of history of Nepal. Today we are sharing the history of Nepal work and its impact and contributions to the Nepal, establishing a strong foundation of the SDLC. I think most of you know about the SDLC, Sustainable Development Learning Center uh, Community, or you can call the chapter, also you can call the uh, center, but usually we call it a community. Uh, we have started contribution, <coughs> contributions and uh, the, uh, all the histories. I think a lot of contributions we have in Nepal. Uh, so, uh, Shana, could you share uh, this slide one? Thank you. So here we, our title is the, the long history and the foundation of the Nepal SDLC. Uh, so that uh, this is the title, but it's a very quite uh, uh, long and uh, uh, the deep uh, meaning of it, because long history we are talking about uh, 70 years back. And the foundation is the we have sustainable development learning center. And then we have the second statement here and to learn from community and share back what you know. I think this is a, what uh, after our future generation believes and we practice because we are not always you know, teaching or sh sharing to the community, but we learn from a lot of things from community at the respective countries, respective communities. And then what we learn and what we know, then we share back. So that is the most important uh, to us. So today we have focusing what we learn and we are, what we're gonna share. So this is the two major theme we are talking about today. Next slide, please. So here, here I have given a, a full sentence over here, uh, SDLC foundation and impacts in Nepal 1949 things. So here you can see the picture over here. The first impression use the picture, the uh, black and white picture. So this is the um, Robert Fleming, left side and the right side is the Rana G. So that time we have Rana in the system and there are big leaders, big uh, Ranas uh, we have in uh, Nepal. So these are two pictures over here. This is a very historical picture, Robert Fleming Schneer lead the first scientific expedition through the Himalayan region because he liked the most of birds and uh, uh, wildlife diversity. So that was his main objective in that time. And then the findings of survey and documents, the, bir the birds of Nepal, which set up in a best line of the 753 birds species in Nepal and become valuable uh, the birds lovers. I think that time in 1949, 19, uh, that time, I think very rare people are interested in doing this bird surveys, the bird, you know, lovers can team. Now, I think there's uh, more than thousand students, thousand people are interested in the bird, birds studying and all this. So I think this uh, book over down here, the bird of Nepal, this will be very useful. Those are people, uh, your know, uh, bird lovers, and who are one, who want to learn about the birds. This is very useful in that uh, in this book. Uh, next slide, please. So at the same time, in 1949, the future generations ponder. Most of you know the Dr. Carteller conducted the health survey in that time. 
and he treated more than 800 patients and performed 57 operations in that time. So that is the, not only the research, but uh, it was a, a serving community. And that time in Nepal, very health, uh, health facilities, health service, very rare in village. And we actually, we don't have that much health services because people are believe in traditional healers, tra tra uh, traditional uh, the medicines at that time. So these are the very historical uh, performance and his historical uh, you know, uh, the uh, works done in Nepal. I think so far the, I, am, I have collected all these informations based on the reports, based on the documents and uh, the histories I'm asking with Daniel about this because he know the most of about this. And uh, <clears throat> you know, picture over here, the tall guy is a Dr. Carteller. And that's a true, that's, I don't, uh, I forgot their name, but name is mentioned in the report also. And then below the uh, next, uh, the uh, picture, uh, Dr. Carteller is uh, you know, examining the, uh, Mr. Rana. So these are the historical you know, uh, services they are doing. Next slide, please. And you can see the historical at that time, uh, 70 years back, this uh, you know, type of transportations and type of housing uh, the people looks like. You can see all these. And uh, this is very uh, you know, historical picture. So that time we don't get any color pictures always, but there's a thousand pictures we have, but I selected a few of them. So these are to interest to see. The pictures are taken Pokhara and the Kali Gandaki region when they are traveling to the Sar Health Survey. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the second chapter, the Saldima Bamboo Conference. This second chapter and <clears throat> The, uh, I think this is a most of the very important uh, part of uh, survey and conference um, uh, conducted in Nepal, mostly in Barun National Park area. The Saldima is the uh, name uh, that we are uh, uh, place uh, which we are doing now on the project, Biomeritan Research Project at present. So that's the Saldima is place. So Dr. Daniel is very familiar with in this area. And research and conference done uh, from I think uh, 1983 to 2000. So this is, uh, we are talking about the, this period of uh, 1983 to uh, 2000. So it's a very long history there. And in this picture over here, uh, you can see really there's a bamboo house people there sitting and they are uh, doing some discussion and down there people the lot many people are traveling in jungle and then here <coughs> sorry i have little cup <clears throat> and they uh, in these surveys there's a lot of many uh, the high level people are involved in this survey and the research project because you know, he mentioned it, uh, a cheap national geography magazine and a Filipino topic and, and a president of the foundation and local communities are here. And about this uh, long history, I can, uh, Shannon, can you click that in the report part? Yes, over there. Huh? I think it's a link supposed to be there. Anyway, if this is not working, I say, okay. Yeah, thank you. That is the thing. Here you can see the Makalu Barun Nature Conservation Seminar 
So this is the part of the final report in 1985, uh, that final report over here. Uh, there's uh, um, Dr. Daniels over here. If you could slide a little bit down, Shannon, please. Very fast. You can go down. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, this is our King uh, Maidra. That time, actually, uh, uh, Dr. Daniel reported those uh, survey reports, all this to His Majesty Government of Nepal. So here's a whole report there. If anyone interests, you can read that. Also, I have not linked to that Dr. Uh, Cartel's report uh, was not uh, included here. So there's a very major few reports, very effective. Uh, and there's uh, so many exports <clears throat> involved in this report, but uh, mm, uh, I have not included the Dr. Carteller's report. Thank you. We can uh, jump to slide. Okay. Okay, thank you. So here, the first, I think the 83 I am talking about, uh, Robert Fleming uh, Daniel and his uh, uh, two and a half year son, Jesse, they are tra traveling to the Barun area, which is we are working now. They are searching beer, pro uh, searching the beers, research on the, about the beer. So this is one of historical area. Now we are working in this area, uh, biomerit research project. Most of you know, we have three devices using uh, the, the temperature devices and the sound recorder uh, bioacoustic. And also we have well lab camera is using there. And that is the route. We also, we called these routes, I think so far, I understand is uh, uh, the Yeti Trail route. So that's uh, in jungle. There you can see the picture. Next slide. Here you have significant conference, 1984 which is uh, <clears throat> the many high level peoples uh, uh, involved in this area, especially here, Dr. Tirta Sreshtam, most of you know. You can see from here, the uh, left side, the person, Dr. Tirtha. And then you are middle, uh, the picture is uh, uh, Mr. Ka Dr. Kachi. And then the right side, the picture is John. And Bob is also there, and Derek and His Majesty Hunters. That was the most important that involved in that research project area. So these are, uh, I'm just some, uh, giving you a very summary thing, but this is a long history, so many things you can talk about that. But I'm giving very uh, short and a summary of this uh, program. Next slide, please. Here is a picture, the, uh, the chopper helicopter uh, is the uh, upper uh, uh, Saldima. The observation and the meeting at Saldima, Uber Borun we call it. The meeting and the planning for setting up national park in Makalu Borun region. The participants here, I have mentioned the vice <coughs> chairman of national planning commission, which is in Nepal, very important whole country development and all the programs, the uh, plans come through the National Planning Commission. So he was the one of participant over here, <coughs> sorry. And his majesty hunters also there. So this is another uh, angles, sorry. Angles, they are very important. That time we have uh, the King uh, Mahindra, uh, Director General of National Park, and Dr. Campbell also there, and Dr. Tirtha and Dr. Dana. So these are very important and high level people participate in there. And they have doing seminar observation, what, how we can, what they see and what, how they can plan in future. So this is a very brief, but Dr. Daniel can add you later on more about it. I, I think, I definitely, he knows much, much better than I do. I am just doing so many about it. Next slide. So here is quite important part. And uh, 
49 to 99 research and survey reports, significant contribution to Nepal government officials, political leaders and communities it's, uh, to self-evaluation about the past and the present plan at that time. I mean, not now, that time. And political and the projects, uh, policies and projects to make effective decision-making for future planning and implementing projects in partnership with the community and NGO and INGOs. So this is kind of seed scale concept that applied now and they have understand. So what they did was at that time from these reports, this research, uh, they realized and they did evaluation themselves, our government, ourselves. And then they could make effective decision making so that the re result of, I think, uh, Makalu Barun National Park was established and now is running. There's a long history over there. So this is a very important part of what contributions from the 49 to 99. But 2000, there was a report submitted to His Majesty government by Dr. Daniel. Next slide, please. So here, I said uh, the report submitted to King Brendra, 2000 and field observation over Baru, which I, uh, we have seen that pictures over there already, slides there, Nepal planning commissions. So that main key points over here is 80% of people are healthier today. That means 2000, that time. And then 50 years ago, 1950s, the 20% of people are worse off. Perhaps this is the root cause of the country's growing civil uh, unrest. So that's the reason where there's uh, some problem. 30% uh, population below the poverty line, one fifth living below $1 a day, half of population illiterate, 60 per thousand of the under five mortality rate. And the problem in Nepal is not lack of resource, but lack of management. So that is still we are uh, having, and that's I think definitely true because we have our management and we have actually, if you see Nepal government planning and all these reports are perfect with very standardized, but the when you are implementing, then that is the problem and the management to implement, they have to have good management. So management was lacking in there. Then community-based structure, project clinics, schools, forest, micro, micro credit schemes, and water supply systems are more example of power of the people's aspiration. But the people who are doing themselves, some projects are, are very interesting. So that is our learning uh, from uh, se uh, 70 years, learning that community themselves do better than you know, uh, somebody's doing outside in, you know, um, doing for them. So that is the community, we call it a three-way partnership. The community is the most important. They can do themselves what they have. So which is uh, important. So that is the, I think uh, here we have learned from this practice and uh, from Nepal. The people of Nepal have demonstrated their capacity, massive investment, the human energy. Because we have doing a lot of the, if you see the forest management, community forest management system in Nepal is very successful. And also we have community uh, health programs in the rural area is uh, quite much better uh, than <clears throat> the urban area, because urban area is uh, the, so many traditional, not traditional, but is the uh, hospital and the privates, they are, who are rich people can have the uh, urban area, but rural, they don't have anything. So which is very important, mobilize the human energy in the rural area, which is quite better than before. Next slide, please. So this is a third chapter, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I have some problem today. The master course in Nepal residential, uh, 
I think most of us know that Future Generation uh, Master Program, which started in 2003 as a kind of pre-test program and 2004 and 2005 is first class of the uh, uh, master program in that, <laughs> which is a, a first uh, class master program. And we have that uh, master program we have residential in Nepal. So now you can see the left side uh, picture. This is our first class, uh, the master program student. And Bob Fleming is there. And the uh, right side, exactly back side of his hair, that's the Mount Everest, top of the Mount Everest from Nepal side, okay? So this uh, purposely we have taken picture that we are the uh, the Mount Everest <coughs> uh, base camp area. So we have uh, the program we have conducted there and the Dr. Uh, Bob Fleming was uh, leading our program. And the middle of uh, the picture is in uh, also on the way to the uh, Mount Everest area. And there's uh, uh, also the thought down here also and the one, the uh, right side picture is the last, the uh, Nepal residential uh, class 2017. So I purposely put the two pictures, especially here once, the first master program residential in Nepal, which is uh, the 2005 classes in, uh, we have Mount Everest site, we have uh, residential there. And 2017, uh, that was the last residential and uh, uh, I conducted this program and this is we have uh, observing uh, AC mod, the knowledge park. So we are practicing here. So middle uh, between this first uh, 2005 and this was uh, I think 2017 to between there, number of residentials we conducted in Nepal also. And also we have graduations in Nepal as well. So these are two, two things which are beginning and end, but in middle there's number of uh, residentials there. These resi residentials we have uh, make more strong to establish sustainable developmental learning communities as well. Uh, next slide, please. So here a sharing and learning from Nepal experts during Nepal residential. They have a number of our professors, a number of uh, experts, number of scientists, they have conducted our, uh, you know, uh, they took the session about master program in Nepal residential. So here's a picture, Dr. Tirta Sresta is you know, familiar with us and he's here. The other, uh, the professor, I think Dr. Daniel know about this, but I forgot her, his name. <coughs> so anyway, what key thing is here is Nepali exports, they're sharing with our international student, which was very important that they learn from us and they share with us. So that's the key thing which uh, beauty of our uh, future generation graduate school sharing and learning international. So that is the key uh, thing here. Next slide, please. This is very important part. I, I myself, I consider this very important part and this is big history also here. The Higher Learning Commission from USA uh, and visited the master residential program in Nepal. So uh, everyone knows the High Learning Commission is the, our best in, important for our master program that they do the monitoring, they evaluate and they uh, approve our uh, program and all this. So here is uh, three pictures over here. Uh, the left side picture from seeing from the left side picture, this is the place, the very historical place in uh, Robert Fleming. <coughs> Sorry. Robert Fleming started a clinic through United Mission to Nepal in 1940, uh, 1953, 54. 
and also 1957. That was uh, my birth. Not long, not long. It was his mother that started that clinic, not Robert Fleming, his mother. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Thank you for correction, Father. So his mother started in this uh, uh, 1957, and that is the my birth year, you know? So when you uh, mentioned the start, but that time there was a cow shed in that area. But now after that, you uh, UM handed over to this the project to share the care Nepal local NGO, and which is our partner of future generation. And most of uh, the residential program hosted by the Shane Care in Nepal, you know. And then the first meeting, the High Learning Commission meeting here with students, is the same place that 1957 they can, uh, opened a cow shed clinic over here. But infrastructure is changed, definitely. But place is same. This is very historical place over here. And then you have uh, the left side, there are two, one gentleman, one general, uh, the madam, they are from High Learning Commission. And we have uh, uh, the um, departure, their departure uh, uh, time, we have given some khatas, all these, they are very happy and they have given wonderful lectures to the student saying that Nepal was amazing. And uh, they are the, what the difference, the future generation uh, graduate school and other university, what the difference they saw, how they learn, how do they teach. So that was very interesting, impressive to the master student and also they learn. They are first time in Nepal. So this is very historical pictures over there. And the, down here, next uh, picture is with uh, the High Learning Commission members take a uh, picture with student. So this is a kind of uh, future generation university and uh, we have strong foundation for the uh, our sustainable development learning communities. Next. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So this is the, the graduation over here. In Nepal, we have two graduations. So far, I remember the ones in uh, 2009 which is uh, we have a park on uh, the, I think, a, uh, yeah, it's this park. And uh, uh, the one, the 2011 is graduation in uh, Buranil Kant, uh, the Sakya, uh, guest, uh, Kathmandu guest house owners on the uh, on restaurant or hotel. So these are the Nepal graduation, two graduations here. And uh, we have uh, the special pictures, if you have, who are new, uh, the women's, Nevari women's lead the graduation ceremony program. So they have drums, all this, they're very special for this. Um, yeah, okay, next slide, please. So here is the two. One is the uh, Gokarna uh, Resort, uh, the graduation, uh, the right uh, right side slide two, and the left side is uh, the uh, 2009 graduation. So this is a graduation program. So I put it to two there. So far I remember two graduation there it is, but I have I didn't include the other residentials. But most many residential we conducted in Nepal. And I have involved most of the residential program. Uh, next slide, please. So this is another chapter. Uh, we talk about uh, yet detail, yet detail. So the uh, the last slide, which Dr. Daniel was carrying the, his uh, son Jesse, they're traveling in. I think so. Uh, I think so. Um, uh, the route, which uh, the place we are talking about that. Uh, this is the picture of 2010, uh, which uh, Daniel suggested me to go there and do the survey. Is the possible that uh, AT trial is possible to open it? Because that is very important part. Uh, the present of the um, tourists as they're going round and come back same route. If we could open this uh, trail route, there is, uh, you know, rounding uh, tourists and they are more interesting 
and very virgin, uh, you know, uh, forest and wildlife in the tourists can see. And also community has more income generation activities will be there. So what I did was in 2010, I did survey with community uh, group team. And then also I asked the permission from the national park. They, uh, they approved our uh, permission. And, and then again, uh, I request to LDO, we called LDO that time, the local development officer who are the district uh, development uh, you know, department for the finance that we work as a partnership. Future generation provides some contributions uh, and uh, the uh, government will contribute some and the community work as a uh, you know, volunteer and the, uh, labor work. So that was we conducted and the program was started by 2012. Uh, so this is the how the AT trial was started, but now it still is continuing. And now our uh, next uh, session we will talk about is uh, the biomaritime research project is also uh, our survey and research project along the AT trial also. Next slide, please. So here is the uh, the survey we have did. Uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, 2018. The local uh, the right side picture is interesting. The LCC formed. LCC means a local coordinating committee, you know, see, which is very important. Many uh, groups represent in this committee, and they they coordinate as a whole area. So there is number of forest user groups and. Uh, the local groups they are uh, um, represent, and that is the after back side. Uh, I think the left side picture there, Jesse, when he was two and a half years old, he carry uh, the renal carries him. That is a picture I show. Now he is here after thirty five years. He visit again in that area and come back and joined our LCC meeting there. So JC is there, you, if you see that picture clearly. And uh, then this is our LC, LCC and, and which will be running in future and present and future project, which in, uh, we will discuss about the next um, presentation. And the middle of uh, the picture is, we are doing survey at the beginning of 2018. We have pre pilot project and the uh, left side, the women's group, this is the first women's group we, uh, I formed in 2010 in Shaksila village. And now there is more than 12 groups already there. They are now. And there's other youth groups uh, and uh, uh, farmers groups and many groups are there. So this is a board color coordinating committee and a women's group. Uh, so that we will talk all, uh, more. <coughs> in the next presentation. Uh, next slide, please. So here is we sharing back to community. We talk about, we learned a lot of things. We report to community. Uh, we report to back the government, high level, then I'll report it. And all these where feedback was given to government. Now this is time to be sharing back to the community. So in 2018, Future Generation Partnership with the, the East Foundation and formed as uh, <coughs> sorry, Save the Barun Bailey. We call it Barun Bachao in Nepali. So Save the, um, the, Save the Barun Bailey team formed. So here in the picture here is uh, we have uh, um, Save the uh, Dr. Tita is there and the Shushila is there. Ravindra and uh, Khagendra, and then rest of the our youth volunteers trained by Surendra uh, the in Shiani care. So he will talk about this uh, next uh, next slide more about it. And uh, so this is formed, and then the, over here local is in, definitely we are Barun, uh, save the Barun uh, kind of uh, what you call a logo or whatever. So this is that we start. We will talk in this more details in next presentation. Next slide, please. 
So this is the kind of, I would like just to, have to know um, that uh, uh, we don't have, we don't have any office in Nepal, uh, but uh, we have built my, uh, the uh, small office over here. And uh, then <clears throat> uh, it was my pleasure that uh, um, Madam Shell and his son Tat and Daniel came the first time and uh, inaugurated this office, which this is the place we have established for future generation graduate school when I was come back from uh, Arunanjal in 2016 and then started work as a regional academic uh, academic director. And that time uh, we have established this office. So Himalaya Region Liaison Office uh, that was established in, the, in 2018 inaugurated, but this building was built in 2016. You know, so purpose of this building is, as I mentioned here in slide, liaison office to set up the meetings place. So this is place we used when we are doing residential student and to, mostly 2017 class. We have every month a meeting over here and we uh, work on the Zoom meetings over here. And also our uh, partners, share care staff and TF staff, we come here and we have meeting in this office. So this is the kind of we starting point here, but this uh, office is built after the earthquake. So this is earthquake proof. Uh, so we don't worry about our uh, participant meeting when we have the earthquake guns, no problem in this building. Thank you. Next uh, slide, please. So now I would like to hand over to Surendra uh, because uh, the shared care managed the uh, community development management training, which is Surendra was there and Surendra conducted these courses. So I would like to hand over to the Surendra. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it is my pleasure to be part of this. Uh, presentation. Uh, well, uh, um, I, I consider uh, this community development management course for the youth from the Borun Valley is one of the most uh, significant or important foundation for Nepal STLC journey uh, for developing human energies. Yeah. Uh, the future generation supported 14 youths eight male and six female from a very rural five villages uh, at the Maka, Makalu Borun Valley region. And they, they, they came to the Kathmandu uh, uh, where Sharon Care has their own training center. And they were there for a two months residential course. And this course is actually uh, uh, designed for one year. And they had to stay two months uh, in the residential learning course where they meet with the people from different part of Nepal and learn. And we have uh, three sessions, which is about community development and management. And they learn all this during the two months residential. And after that, they go back to their community and uh, they do the, uh, the uh, practicum, community practicum. Uh, at the end of the course, residential course, they develop the action plan. And based on that plan, they went back to their community and they implement their plan, plan in coordination with the local groups or governments, or if there is any organization with the help of that organization. So it was very uh, exciting and uh, important lesson learning for me during this course, because uh, the first batch was uh, in the year 2013, where Dukpa and Wangmo, very important people, came to uh, the training center and they learned. And accordingly in the year 2013, 14, 16, and 18, all together 14 youths got this training. And I have, since uh, I, was the, I was the lead facilitator uh, of few course sessions. So I have witnessed uh, so many um, empowerment and changes uh, with these uh, participants, especially the uh, um, most of the the most of the participants uh, had a very first time visit in Nepal, uh, sorry, visit in Kathmandu because they are living in the rural area. And when they are in the, the, uh, the Kathmandu, they, they feel very 
uncomfortable, but we have managed, of course, in a such a way that they, uh, they started feeling very flexible and friendly very soon. And uh, one of the lady at the Wang Mo, and uh, she was very having difficult time with the language because they, they, they speak very different language in their community. And even the Nepali language accent is very difficult. But the course was designed in so, um, uh, in so properly that they started, uh, the students, they started helping each other. <clears throat> well, and um, uh, I, I have recently traced out uh, about these 14 students, what they are doing. And I found that most of them are uh, participated, uh, most of them are engaged in the uh, social groups, youth groups, forest user groups, and some of them are social entrepreneurs. And this is very um, encouraging that they have at least uh, practiced some of the best practices they have learned in, during this training. So uh, <clears throat> uh, this is about uh, the participants and the course. And a uh, few of them, well, uh, 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 within these 14 youths from the uh, different villages, some of the girls, very young girls, are, uh, uh, came from a very long way uh, from the Kathmandu, which is very close to the Tibet region. So uh, even they are in the uh, girls group and women's group. And this is very exciting uh, news for us. And uh, we have a few projects ongoing in Nepal. And uh, like the people like Dukpa Tikepa Bote, who is working as field coordinator for our BBRP project, and Rinjin, who was the participant of this course, is a secretary for our local coordination committee, and the Wangmo local teacher, as well as a woman group leader. And she was also uh, the participant of that course, Lavina Rai. She's the local host for us in the, uh, while we go to the village, and she also runs homestay. So these are only few uh, case studies, but there are lots of nice, uh, the encouraging stories with our uh, with these participants who came to Kathmandu for this course, and I consider this as a very significant uh, phase for uh, Nepal SDLC because we are only limited in ward number four right now. When we extend our project in the future, we have lots of human energies in the various part of this Barun Valley region. And we can, uh, we can uh, use them and use their learnings to, uh, to uh, share it with the other the community members. So it is very exciting that we have so many uh, young peoples who have been trained uh, uh, by, with the support from the future generations and they are ready and they are welcoming us um, uh, <clears throat> in a very friendly way. So, we have lots of opportunities working with these uh, youths. Yeah, I think uh, this is uh, all I have for this presentation this time. Um, Nawang Ji and uh, Surendra, uh, thank you so much uh, for this really helpful background. And we look forward a month from now to the uh, second presentation, which is to, to describe the SDLC um, and also will show the increasing number of partnerships, organizational partnerships that Future Generations has with um, at least half a dozen other uh, groups now as we are using the SDLC for uh, potentially nationwide extension of uh, the joint agendas of conservation and uh, family health and uh, rural livelihoods development. Uh, we do have a few more minutes, and so I invite anybody uh, first from the international group that is watching, some uh, 22 people uh, who have questions, and then secondly, from the after the international group, if there's anybody here in this, uh, the world room here on North Mountain. Well, I'd like to just jump in jump. really quickly, just with a, not a question, but, but a comment, and also just to re-articulate re uh, thank you to uh, my dear friend Nalong and Surindra for this great presentation has been mentioned when we got into this, we really realized that there was so much history here that we couldn't do it all in one meeting. And so really looking at where we've come from and, and that has been so much part of our process as you'll see next month about kind of in, in helping to decide where we're going. And I thought it was so important to lift up 
how that early work has informed other pieces. But one, one thing I wanted to highlight on what Surindra just presented, and Surindra, please comment further, Nawang, who was the regional academic director at the time, but this CDM share and care course that we just heard about, we heard about the students who did it. But, and as Surindra said, he was working at share and care in a management capacity. But I wanna note that that CDM course was specifically the one of our students practicum. Uh, many people know our dear friend, Bim. And what is really important is that, and, and I think that needs to be lifted up, that what Surindra and Nawang and Surindra, please, please add to this, but what Sharing Care did and, and what this CDM course that we built capacity a number of years ago and we're now using the people who were trained in it as community partners was a direct result of BIM turning around and offering, wanting to offer something similar to our master's program but at the community level in Nepal. And I just want to really lift that uh, huh? Ramesh and, and Ramesh did as well. So mm -hmm. I really want to lift that up and give Nawang and Surindra a chance to comment because it, it highlights the synergy between our students and our community work in, in such a great way. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Luke. Uh, I think the we have uh, the sharing the care, the uh, diploma, that called a diploma course. Actually, that is a one year, as Surindra mentioned, one year course and uh, two, two or three months of residential and then they have go to community lab project there and then we follow up with, again on all, all these. So that the method was exactly used that our master program, uh, you know, method uh, because of the, uh, they have used Moodle, they have used uh, the, all these, um, uh, you know, Zoom system. And when they are in the uh, um, village, they're back, and they can, who are using mobiles, they can use that. So that's very similar to future generation, uh, the uh, master program, uh, not 100% the curriculum, but very similar to the system and method of teaching that was used. And also that was very important and very good. That I feel that uh, the uh, participants, they came from different NGOs and uh, 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 different uh, districts. They come back and they, for example, the UN United Mission to Nepal, which is uh, you know, more than 60 years now in working in Nepal, and they send participants for that training because actually they are a perfect uh, you know, NGO that community development, but they send that training also in shared care. So that was a very uh, Nepal wide, the participant and it was a very uh, effective on that and the people are very interesting. And then in that time, that was a opportunity, opportunity we catch up the future generation sponsored to our Barun area uh, student in, to participate in that. And then they, take, they took that course and go back and the Dukpa is a very example of leading. And the many other members are leading the community development work now. So these are very uh, interesting and uh, you know uh, the effective that course, and uh, that was uh, I think uh, uh, Surendra can add more uh, you know things that how he uh, he, he think about. Um, yeah. Unfor uh, unfortunately, um, we're at a time limit, um, and I do want to give some opportunity for other people who have questions uh, to, to, to speak. Pisia has brought in a question from Ethiopia. Pisia, this question, I think, will be most easily answered a month from now. Uh, Luke will be able to also respond to you directly, but um, uh, I do want to give chance for other people to to, to speak and comment. Uh, next week we will be talking, uh, next month we'll talk also about the role of the uh, uh, bioacoustics and the community monitor, uh, the wildlife monitoring, which is an important part of the history that is being presented next, in next month. Um, but is there anybody else who wants to raise a question from the international group before we turn here into the North Mountain? Uh, is there anybody here in the office uh, in the North Mountain who wants to make a comment?
Well, since we are at the one hour point, uh, Surendra, you were trying to make an additional comment about the share and care. So mm -hmm. you now have two minutes that you can squeeze okay. in your, your, your response. Thank you. Yeah, okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, Nawang here said lots of things about uh, the CGM course and its impact and our uh, initiation to support the youth from the Bowdoin Valley. Well, the, co uh, well, the course is very similar to the, the master's course. We also use the Zoom and later on, we also use the model online course, everything, whatever was possible that time. And the most important thing is that we also introduced the seed, seed not the scale, but the seed uh, process to the community so they can uh, have the knowledge about the proper development process or empowerment process. But uh, uh, we use a very simplified version, uh, which was very layman level because we have lots of participants from the rural area. So it is not possible for them to introduce the, the complicated, uh, the, uh, uh, the process or the, the wordings, these things but we use very simple things. And the most important uh, purpose of the course was to empower the, the, this participant to build their, uh, uh, to, to motivate them that they are part of the society, the community, and it is their rules and they can do it. That was the most important. And my, my, my supervisor, Ramesh sir, he always wanted the student not to learn the, the, the uh, uh, the di difficult things, but to learn the very simple things that can be used in the community, that can be uh, that can be uh, directed to the the to contribute to the change in the people's behavior. That was the purpose. That why that is why uh, even uh, even in the same class we have a very uh, like the the ten class pass students and also the bachelor level pass students, but they learn at the same amount of. Uh, uh, the learnings. So that was the very important uh, uh, the aspect of the course, and and uh, <clears throat> and I uh, I have witnessed lots of this kind of changes and changes in participants' behavior and their uh, in an increase in their motivation uh, with the people with the youth from the Barun as well as the people from the eastern and western part of Nepal. <clears throat> it was good opportunity for share and care and also for the participants. <clears throat> Uh, well, thank you again to Nawang and Surendra for this very informative presentation of the 70 plus years of um, the future generations engagement of its people uh, before the institution future generations started. Um, and uh, I'm eager for you all to rejoin a month from now when we talk about the present program that is bringing together the health ass background of future generations to with the conservation background with the bioacoustics uh, monitoring project and also community well-being through livelihood work that will be presented as the SDLC case example one uh, one month from now um, and the whole growth growing process of the SDLCs this year I'm mindful of your question Luke will be answering you directly but we are now have a new understanding a new way to grow these SDLCs and it was very nice that this presentation ended with a discussion of share and care, which was an institution that Future Generations was instrumental in helping create. Ramesh, who is the executive director, was enrolled for quite some time in our master's program when he was creating this. And of course, Nawang himself, a graduate of our master's degree, was the chairman of the board of Share and Care and was guiding its development. Uh, so that's a good example of the extension processes that the future generations had through other institutions. At this point, we are at the one hour period. I want to thank everybody for coming um, and uh, joining today. And let's, uh, let's just leave with a round of applause, please, for our colleagues in Nepal with a really excellent Thank you very much. Good day, everyone. Sorry for that uh, I have some cops and uh, I could not... Uh, speak very well sorry for that yeah thank you everyone thank you very much